Hey everyone, it's Ty Warner with uh, Tyke Engineering and Kissoft Gleason Tech Support. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Kissis power flow stuff today. Specifically in this kinematic stuff, we're talking about power flow and load profiles, load spectrum. So, first thing is first, we are going to open up our multi path load spectrum project. And basically, what this is is it looks like a four gear train, linear gear train. Uh, everything's connected, same module, same gears. They're supported by some shafts and bearings. Uh, this is something you might see on an accessory drive on, you know, industrial motors or gearboxes, stuff like that. Um, in this case, we're going to have, we're going to be driving a couple of pumps and we have multiple outputs. Okay. Inputs and outputs. So we have an input, which is right here on this input shaft. So this is the input shaft here. We have an idler gear that sits in the middle and transfers power from this input gear to an upper pump and a lower pump. We have the lower pump driver and an upper pump. Okay. So, uh, what we want to do is we want to split power off of this. And the way we do that is for, for the upper and the lower pump. If I open this, these, uh, model elements up you can see we have a lower pump coupling and an upper pump coupling additionally you can see on the input shaft we have an input coupling so we know we're going to bring power into this gear mesh uh, through the shaft and you can see in your diagram it comes in on the input shaft and then it transfers through this idler gear the idler gear is spinning on some kind of a pin with some bearings supporting it the uh, upper pump is connected to the idler gear okay and there's some power draw off of that and the lower pump is also connected to the upper pump gear and there's some power draw off of that so the so the gears are you can see the, the type of power draw off of these gears and how the power flows through the system <clears throat> and what we do then uh, it, if it's a single input dual output um, we could even probably make that a little bit easier to see if we go to this pump driver. Let's go to the upper pump. If I hit that shaft module, what we'll do is we'll extend that a little bit and then move this coupling out here. We'll make that a little bit uh, a little bit longer. There. Okay, there's a coupler for the for that pump. We're gonna close out of here. It'll update the model. You can see we're holding it with a couple of uh, tapered bearings. And we're going to update the model. So once we update the model, we can refresh this. And you can see that there's a, uh, a pump out here now. We're going to do the same thing for the lower pump. We're just going to extend this a little bit. Like so. We're going to move this coupling over. Uh, we probably need to make that diameter like 45 maybe. And then we'll just make it 30 millimeters long. And there's the, the, the coupling out of that pump. All right, now we made that change. And we're going to refresh right up here. And we can see that. Uh, I see the issue on the upper pump. We're going to make this 45 as well. There we go. Okay, so we updated this. And now we have, uh, we can see our input coupling right here on the top it's going to be oh it's kind of some input shaft here it's that red collar on the input shaft <clears throat> the lower is going to be on this one it's this red collar out here and then the the upper pump upper is going to be right there okay lower pump is there and the upper input is there one two three okay so we are splitting power off of these two pumps uh, from the main input so when we do this we have to specify and we have to know some things so if I right click on my dialog here for the input I'm gonna control the speed input I know what that is it's 1800 I don't know what this torque necessarily is but I do know what the torque uh, output on these other ones are okay 
I'm going to go be the administrator here up here. Uh, on the lower pump or the upper, if I go to the upper pump and I look at the dialog, you can see I'm not holding the speed constraint, but I am going to hold the torque. And right now I know that I've got uh, a negative 120 newton meters of torque, and I'm spinning um, 2270 in some direction, right? So I'm not doing the speed, but I am constraining the torque. And the same thing with the lower pump. If I, if I look at the dialog for that, I'm not constraining the speed. I am constraining the torque uh, and the power, all right? Well, one of the things you can do is you can grab this standard user interface um, here in the templates. So if I were to go to tables and grab this standard user interface, and then if I, you can just go ahead and copy it, right? Copy, go to the model, go to your root directory, and then paste it right here. You'll get this user interface, and it comes up on here. If this, if you can't see this, just go down to this interface and hit show. But it'll put it'll put in this top portion right here. Uh, it'll also put in some some minimum uh, root and safeties. I modified it a little bit, and this is what I wanted to have here. I wanted the tooth count, the root safety, and the flank safety. But you'll notice that I have red numbers on the input uh, and the torque between the upper and the lower. Okay. What this means is um, I can control these from this page, and I don't have to open anything up. I don't have to go back to these dialogs. Uh, and I've got my tooth counts, and I've got my root safety and flank safety. Additionally, I on these bearings I have in here, I put some bearings on. This bearing, uh, it's an it's a L10 life, and then there's an L10 life with stiffness. So this is ISO 16281. Uh, bearing calculation, all right? <clears throat> I brought the settings in. So if you go to templates and you go to settings, you copy that, and you go to the model and you put it in the root directory, you'll get the settings output. So you can see I've got some lubricants I'm connecting. I know it's an oil bath, so I've connected that. Um, uh, I can connect this the system service life if I want, uh, the system reliability, Application factors, let's say I'm going to connect this, and then maybe I make this 1.0, and then I'm going to reconnect it. So anytime you change one of these, if it's connected, just hit double-click double, double -click this connect again, and it'll uh, update everything. My helical gear calculation is connected. It's ISO 6336-2019. Um, I'm looking at my bearings with inner geometry, ISO 16281. Um, I don't have anything else connected in here. It doesn't look like uh, safeties are not depending on size. That's disconnected. I can turn that on, and I can even give it a, a minimum root safe, safety that I want to see. Okay. So those are my settings. Now, if you don't have uh, a load spectrum already defined and put into the database, and some of the times you, you want to actually run it from Kisoft anyways, but you can import that. Uh, in this KISSIS module, we're going to go to um, system, and we're going to we're going to define a load spectrum. All right. We could define a power split, but I don't think we're going to have the same loads on each of these these uh, this pump upper and lower pump. So they're going to change, and they're not going to be as a standard, right? So we need to add a load spectrum. So we have run with load spectrum from the template, or we have select a load spectrum from the database and run it. Well, we have to create a template right now. So what we do is we go over here to default templates, and we grab this load spectrum template. Okay. We're just going to call it load spectrum. You can name whatever you want. Now, if I right-click on this, you see it's ent it's entered into this tree. If I right-click on this, uh, you want to make sure you're on this root directory as well. But you right-click and go define, let's see, definition dialog. I think that's what I want. I want define, there we go, definition dialog. It says define load spectrum. I'm going to define it manually. 
I could also read from a file, but I'm going to do it manually. Remember, I've got an extra bin here that I'm trying to use. So the number of bins, let's just say that I put five bins in here. So I've got five load spectrums. I want to do a total frequency of one. So whatever I put in there, if I wanted to do percentage, I can do total frequency percentage. I'm going to say it's going to be 20,000 hours. However, I put my frequency range in, it's got to be uh, 100%, right? Okay. Then um, I'm going to keep my speed and torque as factors. Input and lower pump. I could change that to the upper pump. Doesn't really matter. Uh, and this is the, the torque set reference value. There's 284.7, okay, and 1800. I'm not going to use a speed table. I'm going to add one additional column. That's going to be for my upper pump, okay? I say okay, and now I get this next def define the additional variable. So I'm going to call this upper pump torque because that's what I'm able to define in there. I'm going to go down. I'm going to find my upper pump. That's this over here in my, uh, my, my element tree. It says upper pump with the red circle on it. I'm going to define the torque portion of that. All right. And then I say, okay. So now I have, um, Frequency, torque, and speed. It's going to run these. I should get a, I should get another column on here that says upper pump torque. And it finished up, and I have my upper pump torque. Okay. So now let's do our frequency. Let's do 10, 20, 30. Is that 60 percent? Uh, we'll go 15. 75 and 25. That should equal 100%. And remember, we did 100%. 10, 30, 60, 75, 100. The torque is going to be based on this lower pump because that was our base. And it's going to be, if you go in here, it's going to be based off of this 284.7. And the speed is off of this 1800. I think that's correct. So in our load spectrum now, <clears throat> I can put in some values for. And these are factors, okay? These are factors. So maybe I'm 0 0.048, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.786, 0 0.786, and 0 0.048. I got five load bins, and this is what it's going to look like. And my speed is going to look something like 1.17, um, 1.06. We'll call this one. We'll call this one. Um, 0.5. Oops, 0.5. And this one here we'll call one. Okay. So these are my speeds. So I would take that speed, multiply it by this 1800, and that's what my um, that's what my speed would be. Now this upper pump torque is not a factor. Okay, this is an actual value. I'm gonna center this to find these anyways. There we go. So this is not a factor. It's not based on any number. You have to put your own value in here. Okay. So. Um, Remember the upper torque, upper pump torque right here, if you go to the interface, is a negative torque value, okay? And if it wasn't a negative torque value, and I'll show you this quick and you can see it, if this was a positive 120, you'd see that this arrow switches and now it's power coming into the system and going out. So that has to be a negative. You can't get a different direction on the torque. So one of the things you do is you always make sure that this kind of adds up and your power is coming in and going out where you think it's supposed to. And the power is coming in and splitting off of here in two different directions. You can even do that if you want it. Okay. Back to my load spectrum. This upper pump torque is a value, not a factor. So 
negative 29.8, negative 29.8, we're going to call it um, negative 120, negative 120, and negative 223.7, okay? So this is my, these are actual torque numbers in Newton meters in my user interface, all right? If I open up a gear pair, I'm not going to see these values. All I'm going to see is this nominal value as it runs through. I'm also not going to see the load spectrum. So if I open this up, I won't see a load spectrum in my strength tab because it won't be there, okay? So if I go to my strength tab, there's nothing here. So this would be basically a nominal load if you look at it. Now, what I need to do, if I want to look at everything, and I have these um, these shafts all set up, I, I don't, I'm not considering a load spectrum, but when I run this right here, where it says from the database, not the, I want this from the template. So run calculation with load spectrum from the template. That's this one right here, this template. If I run this, it says check multiple gear meshes. Yes, I'm going to have multiple meshes. All gear shafts and bearings. Yes, I want to look at everything that we have here. I don't need to consider power losses at this point or housing stiffness or modals or contact. If I run all that, it would take a long time. So in an instance of time, I'm just going to go ahead and run a full load spectrum, these five bins, and I'm going to, I'm going to look at this report when it comes out. So I'm going to say OK. And then it's going to process this, and it's going to calculate each of those load bins on the whole system. And then you're going to get a report back that looks at all of the um, output that we wanted um, in terms of bearings and shafts and everything else. And your user interface will update. Okay, it's done calculating, and we get this report up. Uh, it calls our multi-path load spectrum 2. This is what we got going on here. And it gives you the power input, 1800 RPM. 63.5 power. We've got uh, power at the output of the lower pump and power at the input of the upper pump. And if you add these two together, they equal the input power. Uh, we're not taking into account efficiency at this point. And then if you go further down, you can see that we have the, the gearbox gear pair constraints for each one of these. We have the idler gear, uh, the input shaft, pump drive, and upper pump drive. It kind of matches this layout right here in the element tree in terms of which comes first on the list all right if i click on this uh lower pump drive i can see the coordinate shaft system this is the this is the shaft okay and if i drive down in here a little bit you can see i've got my frequency my power my speed all this information is right here and that drives into the um so driven, this is the input, the load spectrum on this, uh, which one did I grab? The lower pump, okay? So this is like your output at the, uh, the lower pump shaft. Uh, and then if you drive down in here a little bit further, you get some shaft information, equivalent stress, under results. Is that my results? Right here, results section four. Uh, I can see maximum deflection. I got my shaft deflection. I have the bearing, the internal geometry of the bearing. I've got the results according to 281, results according to ISO 16281, and I have my bearing reaction forces and moments and displacement, all this, in, this good information that you might use in a report to make sure that your bearings live for how long they got to live, okay? Additionally, if you come up to the top and you're looking for... Um, a gear pair so let's grab the the second gear pair here and that takes me to the gear pair calculation and just like you'd expect with a load spectrum output you have your, your your load bins your frequency power speed torques and if you come down further you have your root and plank safeties um, this is in the report and now if you look at your interface these root and flank safeties 
Let me refresh this. They ought to be, they should match up. 4.9, 4.3, 2.6. Right here. These are the ones that we're looking at right there. And they do match. Okay. So, um, that is how you would set up a calculation uh, with multiple input outputs and then get a report out. Additionally, all my bearing stuff, like if I go in here to this uh, idler shaft and I look at my connection bearing one, I go to my properties. This L10 is this, uh, this one right here. 16748. My L10 life right here, 38. And then my LNH, this one here, is 38. So one is for um, the L10 life, and one is the L10 life at um, with internal geometry according to 16281. So you have a quick little <clears throat> interface that you can put together real quick, and uh, maybe I'll show another how to do that in another video. But this is how you would do your load spectrum. Uh, there's some other things you can do here. There's there's some uh, there's some data that's uh, saved in a, another folder. And you'd be able to pull that data out and look at micro micro damage and that kind of stuff. So that is how we would set this uh, multiple uh, multiple path model together. And of course, if you have questions, you can always contact us at ty dot warner at kissoft dot ag. And uh, you know, feel free to contact us if you're using the software and you need support. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Um, go ahead and comment if, uh, if you have questions or comments or you want to see something else. Appreciate it. Thank you.